Oprah reads books that he recommends. Martin Luther King once took a day off to celebrate his birthday. Fat white women chase him. <laughs> He's the most interesting black man in the world. I don't always drink beer, but when I do, I prefer Code 45. So I look like this because I, uh, I'm mixed. I'm half Japanese, half white. And, uh, oh, thank you. Well, of course you like that. We know that already. Yeah, right? <laughs> uh, but I grew up on the East Coast. I grew up in uh, Virginia, right outside D.C., right? And, oh, is that the same person? <laughs> you didn't like Virginia too much, though. You're like, no, I don't, I'm sorry. I didn't grow up with that many Asians, right? But then I moved out to California, there's a lot more Asians, right? So I wanted to get more in touch with my Japanese side. So I went to Japan a couple months ago and it was cool. I really learned some stuff about Japan. I figured out why they're so smart. You know why they invent all this technology? You know why they invent all this stuff? It's because they're really good listeners. You ever see Japanese people, no matter what the conversation, they're real dialed in. They're always like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> like they're discovering shit. Ooh. It makes you feel good. You're like, I'm saying some shit. <laughs> I just blew this dude's mind. <laughs> but I figured out why they do that. Because now I'm learning how to speak Japanese, right? And the sentence structure is kind of scrambled compared to English. So sometimes the verb is like at the end of the sentence. So you've got to listen to the whole thing to know what the person's saying, right? It'd be like if I said to you, yesterday, I, at the store, many hats, stole. You'd be like, oh. <laughs> right? Because <laughs> I could have said bought, sold, tried on, whatever. You don't know. It's like a little mystery in Japanese. Drama at the end of every sentence. <laughs> so then I'm watching TV, right? And ja they have all these crazy Japanese programs. And then they had an English show. And it was like a teaching program if you wanted to learn how to speak English. So they had a Japanese girl that was from America. So, you know, her accent was really good. Then they had a white dude fluent in Japanese. And it really tripped me out. Because apparently, like, there's no gay accent in Japanese, right? Like, I'm not trying to be disrespectful. It's just like this dude was obviously gay when he spoke English. But then he spoke Japanese like a samurai. It's the craziest shit I ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> like he came out all fabulous and he was like, hey girls, we're gonna learn new phrase today. Today's phrase is, where is the train station? In Japanese, Shinjuku eki wa doko desu ka? And I was like, what the hell? <laughs> I was like, where'd the gay go? Yo, you ever realize there's just something about an Asian dude with a bandana on that it's just go time? It's it's go time. Like, like, if one of these Asian dudes over here, right here, if one of these dudes puts on a bandana right now, they go from Harold and Kumar to Ninja Assassin like that. It's, it's go time, dude. It's, it's, like, it's like a black guy in a do-rag, or he laughed, it's fine. Or, or like a Jewish guy in a suit, like somebody's going down when that comes out. The only thing scarier than an Asian in a bandana is an Arab in a vest. <laughs> and it, if you're not laughing at that, you can kiss my ass. Uh, <laughs> look, you know damn well, we don't, I don't know if this dude's Arab, I don't know if he's Latino, but I guarantee you, if my man ran in here right now with a vest on, and la, 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 this bitch would be empty, <laughs> empty. You think the black people are gonna stick around? Bro, you stick around? Hey, I'll, yeah, you hear, let pew, be freaking gone, because y'all have the best danger instincts on the planet. <laughs> on the planet. And that's why, I, that's why I think that track meets are so unfair. <laughs> they start that joint with a gunshot? What? <laughs> you ain't catching no black dude that just heard a gunshot. <laughs> Shot head right now, bang. <laughs> uh, all the white people start investigating. <laughs> the Asians are like, must be New Year. The race is over. Dude is six blocks away with an alibi. <laughs> 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 
This is a nice mixed crowd in here. Anybody in here racist by round of applause? <laughs> Couple people. <laughs> Racism hit heavy this year, didn't it? Goddamn Paula Dean shit. White people, how you feel about Paula Dean? Hmm? All right, you feel good about what she said? You cool with it? <laughs> Black people, how'd you feel when you found out Paula Dean was calling us again? Man, nobody gives a fuck. It is 2013. You talking about an old white bitch from Georgia. They say again, this is what they say. She apologized, I accept the apology. Now get your ass back in that kitchen and make it get into some biscuits. <laughs> you know? <laughs> then the uh then the guy from the Eagles, Riley Cooper. Riley Cooper. <laughs> he was at a Kenny Chesney concert. <laughs> And he said, I will fight every nigga in here. <laughs> Bro, you are at a Kenny Chesney concert. <laughs> there ain't no music in on there. <laughs> Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV with the best of season two, Return of the Zings. Welcome back to Gotham Comedy Live's The Best of Season 2, Return of the Zings. Welcome back to The Best of Gotham Comedy Live. You know, we live in a judgmental society, and because of this, most people care a lot about their self-image. Or, they're from Montana. Let's check out these comedians' takes on self-image. My lips are huge, aren't they? See the way he laughs so hard? You've been staring at him since I got up here. When I was eight, my lips were the same size as they are now. I could whisper in my own ear. My father would take me fishing, stick my face in the water, and say, okay, call your friends. Huge lips, no ass. How does God do that? That's a passive-aggressive God. I believe in God, but I think he's passive-aggressive. You don't think I'm right? A lot of design flaws in the animal kingdom. Look at the animals out there. God messed with some of those animals, like the platypus. It was Friday at five, God wanted to get a beer. He's like, what do we got left for spare parts in the warehouse? What's that, a duck's bill? Put it on a beaver's ass and get it out of here. Look what he did to the kangaroo. Cute face, powerful legs, massive tail, an animal with a pocket. A pocket. What does God do? Makes his arms too short to reach it. I'm going bald. Let's get that out of the way. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I used to worry about that. Not anymore. Who cares? It's a weird pattern on my head. We can all agree on that. Most of this is going to fall out. But if you look real close, you'll see this going on. This little patch is going to hang on right there. <laughs> that sucks. It's going to be an episode of Lost on my head in three years. Just an island surrounded by nothing. I'm gonna grow it out like a reverse ponytail, right there, right in front of my face, that long and braid it. That's my game plan. People are gonna leave my shows going, you know who was funny? That bald unicorn. That guy was magically delicious, that guy. It's cool, I'm wearing my favorite pants. Um, I like skinny jeans. Oh, thank you. I like them, yeah, because you have to make a choice, you know, between camel toe or muffin top, camel toe or muffin top. I usually just settle for somewhere in between, you know? Just gross everyone out. I don't know what I'm talking about. He's like, she picked camel toe. <laughs> Whatever. I can't give a shit, right? I'm excited, I'm feeling good. I'm wearing my lucky training bra. It's good, double A's, baby. Double A's. I, I, uh, I like having double A's because I was a really bad student. <laughs> These are the only A's I've ever had. Straight A's, valedictorian titties right here. 
My mom has a bumper sticker. My daughter's an idiot, but her tits made the honor roll. There's some summa cum laude dotted pina colada titties right, right here. I, uh, you know what it is? is I realize I, like, I'm not sexy. I'm accessible. <laughs> to, like, to, like, bald guys named Bill with glaucoma. Because he knows he's not getting with Jennifer Aniston, but he has a shot at me. I mean, not an accurate shot, glaucoma, but a shot. A shot. Some women, are, though, are too sexy. Like, they're trying to be so sexy, they don't even look like women anymore. They just look like aliens from another planet. They're like from planet booby hair extension puffy lip, you know? And like, they've been sent to Earth to punish us for facial mobility. And, and, and they hoard all the men with jobs. And they're always on their way to Pinkberry. Do you know what I'm talking about? And then I show up, you know, looking like Punky Brewster on Crystal Meth. <laughs> and they make me say bad things about them to myself. I'm like, she can't read. <laughs> well, she doesn't listen to NPR. I listen to NPR, all right? She doesn't know that guy's name is Tavis Smiley, not Travis, all right? It's Tavis. <laughs> You didn't know that, puffy lip, all right? I did, because I'm a hoarder too, okay? A hoarder of knowledge. Yeah. Important things, meaningful things, like Shaka Khan's real name, Yvette Marie Stevens. Oh, uh, what, what, what? That's called a nerd riff right there. That's a nerd riff, because everybody knows the only way to fight an alien is with a nerd. So, yeah, yeah, so you see some puffy lip tit coming at you, you just nerd riff her. You'd be like, stop tit. <laughs> Did you know the Caesar salad had nothing to do with Caesar? It was 